This morning we finish our three-week look at the Apostles' Creed, right? And a creed is something that we believe. A creed is something that we say to help us understand what it is that we believe and how God interacts with our lives. Um, one of the podcasts I listen to to help prepare for sermons talks about the creed being the shortened Reader's Digest version of the Bible, right? It's a synopsis of what we're told and what we have faith in. Right? It's kind of like this picture. It's, as they said up here, they all look the same. Right? We all, God is this being that we know as three separate entities, as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but we can't ever get one without the other. But we try to explain how this works in many and different ways, and, and oftentimes we fall short. But this morning we get the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Right? There are a bunch of statements, but are they meant to be taken separately? Because when we say them, we say them just like I said them, right? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Like they're. Believe in the Holy Spirit is one thought. Believe in the Holy Catholic Church is another thought. I believe. Right? These are separate thoughts. Are they? Are they? Are they sequential? Ooh, they're sequential. That's an interesting way to look at that. If you look at, this, if you look at the actual, I would say look at it in your bulletin, but some of you don't have bulletins. So I wouldn't say pull it up on the screen, but it won't look the same on the screen. But if you look and look at it in a bulletin, if you can see it, it's actually in our books too. If you open it up and open up the books and look at the, the actual Apostles' Creed, you'll see that it's actually one sentence. It is one sentence with commas. Meaning is one continuous thought. So as Kurt said, yes, it can be sequential. Because you have to have the Holy Spirit in order to have the church. You have to have the church in order to have saints. You have to have saints in order to have forgiveness of sins. You have to have forgiveness of sins to get resurrection and everlasting life. Right? Because Martin Luther said, as we prayed just a little bit ago in the third, in his explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed, that I cannot by my own power understanding come to believe in God except through the Holy Spirit living in and through me and, and helping me understand what the gospel says. I can't possibly believe in God the Father or the Son without the Holy Spirit living in me and moving in and through me. Right? I cannot possibly do, I cannot possibly have belief in God without God helping me to understand what God has done for me. Right? And so we have this last part that talks about the Holy Spirit because we have God the Father who created, but we know through the two lessons before this, in Genesis we see where God was there in the beginning and it was an empty and formless void. And he spoke, which is the word of God, right, which is Jesus. And then his, the wind moved across the water. And the wind is the, also the breath. It's also the spirit, right, because the same word in Greek and Hebrew, the same word for wind and breath is also the same word for spirit. So all three of them were there. And then Jesus comes and dies for us and is risen from the dead to give us everlasting life with God. And then the Holy Spirit. And I saw one head shake. This is an interesting um, part of the creed, right? Because it says, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And then it says something that some of you kind of cringe at every time you say it on Sundays. Right? How many of you say this in that next line and wonder what it means? Right? I believe in the Holy Spirit. What's the next line? The Holy Catholic Church. I know at least one person here doesn't say that. 
Is there anybody other than, than the one that I know that doesn't say Catholic? Because it's actually okay to say the Apostles' Creed differently. Because what is a creed? It's a statement of belief. So if you have issues with saying a word, should you actually say it that you believe it? Are we just repeating this creed because it's something that's in our bulletin? It's something that we do every Sunday? It's something that you've just done. So I just say it, whether I believe it or not. Right? Right. Bill's, Bill's right. You don't just say it because, because it's there for you to say. You say it because you actually believe it. Remember I said, I think it was last week, I had a member of my first congregation in northwestern Ohio who had issues with the second article of the Apostles' Creed, and she would actually not say the parts that she had issue with. She and I had long conversations about it. Um, and at some point she would get to the point where she could almost say, okay, I can see where you're coming from, but I still can't say that. It's kind of like the person last week in the podcast where they, they, uh, the, the professor talked about them going and visiting um, a Jewish temple, Jewish synagogue, and a Christian church. And at one point, the priest at the synagogue asked them, are you going to become members of the synagogue? And the, and the lady said, well, what do I have to do as a, as a believer to, to join the synagogue? And the, and the priest said, you have to not believe in the incarnation of Jesus. You have to not believe that the Messiah has come. And she said, I can't do that. So she couldn't join the synagogue because she couldn't make her faith or her beliefs match what they wanted them to match, right? So we say this every week. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. You'll notice the C on that Catholic. You can't really look at it, but look at it when it's up there on the board. And say it louder. It's not capitalized. Right? When we have the Catholic Church and the big C, and we have some mem people here who are actually members of the Catholic Church, um, big C, Catholic Church, that's the Roman Catholic Church. But when you see little C, what does that mean? See, here we get into terminology that the church uses that the rest of the world doesn't use, so we get confused sometimes when we say them, but we just say them over and over again because that's what we've been taught we're supposed to say. But when we get this little C Catholic, what does that mean? Say it louder. Universal. universal. The word Catholic means universal. I believe in the universal church. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I believe in that part of God that has come here on earth and has given birth to that part of God which is living and, and alive here, moving throughout the world, being His hands and feet, doing the work that God has called us to do and empowering us and sending us out into the world. That's the universal church. That's the church that espouses not just us here as ELCA Lutherans, not the, not the St. Pius down here as Catholics, not St. Max's as Catholics, not uh, little Swamico, Swamico Methodist, not just any church out there, but the whole included body of Christ, which is every last believer on the face of the earth. That's the holy Catholic little C church. Now, some people say Christian, which is fine. But Christian doesn't really get to that whole understanding of what I think God is trying to get at on that Catholic. Because it's a universal thing that is beyond all of our conceptions and all of our imaginations. It's something that's so much bigger. It's the fact that this icon that I show you all the time that I just dearly love and I need to look into more to completely understand all of the imagery because you can't see it. There's mountains and a tree, right? The tree is for the cross. There's a temple in the background over here and mountains. And the thing that I dearly love, and I've said this, I know numerous times here, is this little opening. Because that's what this creed is really all about. It's about the understanding of who God is in our lives and what God has done for each and every one of us. And that this circle is not closed. This circle is open. Because God wants you to be in a relationship with Him. God wants you to be a part of what He is doing in the world. God wants you to be a part of everything that's happening that He has done. Right? And that's the Holy Catholic Church. The forgiveness of sins or the communion of saints. Because all of us are a part of that community. 
where we join at the table and we come to get what God has given to us. And that God, when we come and join Him at the table, forgives us of everything that we've done wrong. He lifts us from where we've been and resurrects us into a new life and gives us life everlasting with Him. Right? That's what we believe. That's what God is moving us towards. God is with us every day and gives us the power to see through life and through the things that are coming, the things that are happening all around us. You see, the Spirit is not just something that we have for us individually. It's something that we have for us communally. It's something that, we, that is part of us that brings us together. It's something that is part of us that unites us in a vision that God has given to us. It's something that unites us in an understanding of a mission that is set before us so that we can show the world the love that God has given to us. That's what this is about. God empowering us and sending us into the world to be His hands and feet to show His love to everyone that needs to see it. It's about God being with us forever and empowering us to do the things that God needs for us to do. So know that God created everything, including you. And He created you to do His will. And then Jesus came to show us how to live. And in doing that was killed. He died. He was risen again to new life. And in that same resurrection, we have that with Him. And then the Spirit comes to us in Pentecost and allows us to do things that we can't possibly imagine and sends us out into the world to share His love so that all may come to know how much God loves us and how much God loves them. So go, empowered to be His hands and feet and share the love that He's given to you so that everyone can know that there's a place for you and for them. Thank you.